from the bottom of our hearts lord almighty that we are alive this hour is not by might is not by power lord and lord sleep as we slept lord jesus that it pleases you my lord and my father to bring that breath of life into us for us to be alive this hour my lord and my father will say to you be all the glory in the name of jesus christ Amen. father lord, by your mercy by your compassion you have called us unto you for us to start the day with you my lord and my father shed of days even as we have come this hour Lord Jesus, we ask that your Holy Spirit take absolute control. Our Lord and our Father, God the Lord, as we have come, my Lord, my Father, none of us, ancient of days, shall go empty from your presence in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. My Lord and my Father, your children have gathered unto you, not unto man. Lord, I release, I humble myself before you, my Lord and my Father. God the Lord, use me, my Lord and my Father, King of all glory, as a tool of honor in your hands. Father, speak to me, speak to me, my Lord, my Father. God the Lord, as your children have come, ancient of days, to hear from you. Lord Almighty, speak your word into them, my Lord, my Father. Let your word this morning, my Lord, my Father, be a word of healing to anyone that is sick. Let it be a word that will lift up mm -hmm. the downcast. Let it be a word that will bring hope to the hopeless. My Lord and my Father, at the end, ancient of this, let all glory, honor, adoration be unto your holy and mighty name. For in Jesus Christ's holy and precious name, we have prayed with thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Child of God, this morning, by the mercy and the grace of Almighty God, we're looking at a topic that is captioned a hope for the hopeless. Yeah. Yeah. A hope for the hopeless. And we're going to look at Psalm 42 as our foundational test. Psalm 42. Because of time, I'll take it from verse 5 to 6. Psalm 42. A hope for the hopeless. I read from verse 5. He said, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. 6. O my God, why my soul is down why my soul is cast down within me therefore will i remember thee from the land of jordan and of the harmonies from the hill misa praise master jesus christ hallelujah brethren this psalm 42 is an extraordinary psalm that reaches down to a state of total despair or hopelessness. But then, it reaches at the same time to the heights of utter joy. The psalmist could apparently identify with having a sense of hopelessness. For he also wrote that his soul is cast down within him. And he says, if you go down to the verse, and he says what many of us have felt at one time or the other, like, why have you forgotten me? 
That's in verse 9. If you go to verse 9, why have you forgotten me? Many of us have gotten to that step before. At the same time, when other people who do not believe in God will ask, where is your God? In verse 10. But one interesting thing about this Psalm 42, though he acknowledged that his soul is cast down to the ground, he is in turmoil, but he still has hope. And we in time praise him in verse 11. So what are we talking about? If our hope is in any man rather than God, then we are indeed in a hopeless situation. But if your hope, if your trust is not in man, you know that in this mountain we are serving a God that gives hope to every hopeless situation. Amen. Somebody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Beloved, I don't know what you are facing now. I don't know that situation that seems that there is no hope again. I don't know what you are looking at. What you can only see is darkness. There's no light. I don't know where you are connecting from. But I have an announcement to make this morning. But upon this mountain, we are serving a God that gives hope to every hopeless situation. Amen. There is no particular one that is bigger than God in this mountain. Mm -hmm. Testimony has been coming and it will continue to come upon this mountain. Amen. Are you new in this mountain? The announcement is this. Whatever that has defied medical solutions, whatever situation that has given you another name, I want to tell you that if you are truly connected to this mountain in truth and spirit, that trial surely will turn to testimony. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. In the book of Genesis 21, you know the story of Abraham and Sarah, who were in their very old age. Abraham was about 190. Medically, Sarah has passed the age of becoming pregnant. But you can see that in their situation, the hopeless situation, God turned it around. I don't know what Satan is ministering unto you. I don't know whether you are at the verge of rolling back your step. I don't know whether you are about throwing away your Christian value. I don't know whether what Satan is telling you that you are wasting your time. I don't know, but I want to tell you that that God that did it in the life of Abraham, in the life of Sarah, that is the same God we are calling upon in this mountain. Mm -hmm. And that God is still alive. Oh, yes. Being as much as God has brought you here, whether you have no option, whether you believe it or not, after all, in the case of Sarah, Sarah was discouraged. She did not believe when the, prom uh, when the pronouncement was made. If Sarah had believed, she should not have you know, convinced her husband, Abraham, to go and sleep with her, with her husband. Hey, guy. He did not believe. Many times we try to help ourselves. But trusting in God, we get us quicker to where we are going than what our feet can do. Mm. At an old age, at an age that is impossible, Sarah gave birth to a covenant child according to the promise of God. Child of God, who says, who says that it is over with you? Who is that mouth? Who is that native doctor? Mm. Who is that one that I have said, I have placed a a, a spell upon you. Who is that one? In as much as you are on this mountain with all your mind, with all your spirit, in as much as still you still stand in awe, in fear of God, 
in as much as he still run away from that thing that will bring the indignation of Almighty God, in as much as you look unto him, the author and finisher of your faith, that God that made Sarah to see a new song, I want to announce to you that your own time has come. Amen. You will sing a new song. Amen. Amen. In this mountain, Amen. God has given us that assurance. Satan can never have any final say on any life here. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Any man that has been saying that it's over for you, any man that is saying that you will not testify like other people, that is a mouth from the pit of hell. That is Satan speaking as a child of God, as a child who have truly given all unto Jesus. I want to announce to you that that thing that you are looking at as being hopeless, can you rethink? Can you use your inner eye, your eyes of the spirit, and you can see Jesus in the middle of that situation? In the middle of that situation, I want to tell you that God is always there, and you can never be alone. Mm. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In the impossible age, so that I can make it. God is the only one who gives hope to a hopeless situation. No man, no pastor, no matter the title, mm. can claim it. It's only God that can bring the turn around. Man. He's the only one who can turn around situations. Mm. The condition of Sarah was already hopeless. You can imagine her age. You can imagine many hospitals in those days, they must have known her. Because if she can still be at the age of 90, still expecting, that will tell her that he must have visited many, many uh, uh, medical personnel. Many must have used her as a practical. But I want to tell us, where men's knowledge stop, that is where God begins his work. Man. And that is where it is called miracle. If you do it, one plus one, it becomes two. It's not. Mathematically, it can be so. But when all situations, when all hope is lost, that is when God steps in. The lesson we can learn from the story of Sarah and Abraham is that when God wants to step into your situation, He will defy every medical and scientific laws. It does not matter what man says. It does not matter what the woman says. It does not even matter what the government of where you are says now. Where you are now, the government may say, no, we cannot do this. In that condition, that situation looks hopeless. But if God wants to step in, he will bypass whatever man says. Mm. After all, Whom are we going to believe his own commandment? Who are we going to believe? Are we going to believe what man has said to stand in our life or what God has already said? God is the author of the whole world and the entire universe and there is nothing beyond his control and ability. God is still on the throne. The God that did it in for Anna, the God that did it for Anna, in the book of First Samuel, go with me to the book of First Samuel. You know the story. You know how Satan can use situations to make the people of God look as if that the God they are calling is no longer alive. Book of First Samuel, Samuel chapter one. I take it from verse three. Samuel three from uh, one from verse three. He said, and this man went out, out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. For. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Perina, his wife, and to all her sons and daughters, portions, wife. But unto Anna, he gave a worthy portion. For he loved Anna, but the Lord has shut up her womb. Six. 
and her adversary also provoked her sore. For to make her fret because the Lord has shut up her wound. Seven. And as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her. Therefore she wept and did not eat. Eight. Then said Elkanah, her husband, to her, Anna, why weepest thou? And why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am not I better to thee than ten sons? Nine. So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk. Now early the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the tabernacle of the Lord. Ten. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept. I don't know what situation I've been making you to weep. A crying that every now and then your pillow is being wet with your tears. A kind of tear that when you had a knock at your door, you just clean up. For that man or woman coming in not to know what you are passing through. I don't know what your adversary have been capitalized to make you, to provoke you to anger. To make you look, look as if that God is not there. I don't know what situation I have done to you. But I want to announce to you that that same God that told the story of Anna, that God is the God who are worshipping upon this mountain. Amen. Praise Amen. Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. When God steps into your situation, brother, if you're a good reader of the Bible, as brother, peace always said, if you are good enough the Bible, you will see that this woman, the adversary of Anna, her mate, because the husband married two, two wives. If you are good enough of the Bible, you see that Penina was only mentioned only once in the Bible hmm. when she was provoking Anna to cry. But you see the way the story of Anna and her son continued in the Bible. Uh, so shall it be in your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. That was the Amen. last time we had about Penina. But when God stepped in in the situation, he turned around every mockery, every mockery that Anna had been suffering, every provocation, God proved himself. Amen. God proved himself. That is the same God we are worshiping upon this mountain. Amen. I don't know. What you are passing through, in one way or the other, each and every one of us have a situation to deal with. But I want to tell you that you went and saw yourself a pity party uniform will not change God for whom He is. Mm -hmm. That you made everybody to come out to say, Ah, so you know, are you seeing that? We will not change God. The only thing that will change God is what Anna continued to do. He went to God, He didn't go. Ellie was there. Even as a chief priest. But I believe at that time, maybe he was not in spirit. As, as, the, as the chief priest of the tabernacle, if we can accuse Hannah that she is drunk with wine in that early hour, The bondage, the yoke upon his life. And what was that yoke? If you go with me to the book of First Chronicle, First Chronicle chapter 4, from verse 9. The Bible says, and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. What this means is that this guy in the spiritual realm, he is more blessed and elevated than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bear him with sorrow. You can imagine. Because I give birth to you in sorrow. Because I pass terrible things. Now your name is Jabez. And Jabez begins to carry that very identification. Jabez might be very, very brilliant. 
He must have studied like any other children. He must have qualified. But when he, when he applied, they may look at his CV and say, ah, your CV is very, very good. Um, but we'll get back to you. And that will be the end of the story. He continued to carry that very spell. Jabez might be very, very handsome. When is he about to marry? Maybe some people might, but some ladies might like him. He might propose to them. Okay, young man, what is your name? My name is Jabez. Okay, your name is Jabez. Okay, brother, I'll get back to you. And that will be the end of that very communication. Because everybody knows what Jabez means. Who would like to go and marry the person that is there? They say his name is Solo. Who would like to employ somebody that they say that is carrying sorrow here and there? So Jabez identified it in the past 10. And Jabez called on God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thy hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, and that it may not, and that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is the God we are calling upon this mountain. Our God is alive. Amen. Our God can handle every situation. Amen. Somebody cannot convince me that there is a situation that God cannot be able to handle. Amen. It is because of lack of knowledge. It's because we are not grounded and rooted in the word of God. That is why some so-called native doctors who, are, who answer Pastors, who answer whatever name can convince you. I don't say you should not practice your holiness and righteousness. I didn't say you should not go to your mountain. But God, let me take you. God, let go. Use this candle. Use this water to bath. Drink this. That is what? Lack of knowledge. But if we are rooted, if the word of God Oh.